Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering NetApp Insight 2017. Brought to you by NetApp. Hello everyone, welcome back to our live exclusive coverage of NetApp Insight 2017. This is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier, the co-host of theCUBE and co-founder of SiliconANGLE Media, my co-host Keith Townsend, CTO advisor. Our next two guests is Dave Hitz, who's the co-founder of NetApp, and Anthony Lai, who's the EVP and cloud business unit manager. Welcome to theCUBE, and Thank welcome you. back. Good to see you, Dave. Thank you. I always love, I wrote a post years ago called Keep the Founders Around. You know, I always joke with you on this, but the DNA of a company is super critical, and how the products get positioned even as the evolution, the DNA is critical. Great to see you out on the front lines, pressing the flesh with the customers here. Uh, Keep tip. the founders around, so I have a theory about that. Because some people say companies where the founder stays around are more successful, and therefore I must be awesome. <laughs> but I have a different theory, which is companies are, that are really successful are a more interesting place for founders to continue to be interested yes. to stay. Yeah. So I think that yeah. the causality may be the other way around. Yeah, it's don't like have them as a placated. If your founders want to keep staying and playing, you Bingo. must be doing really cool stuff. It's a cultural issue, and this is a big DNA discussion. Um, we go back seven years, we've talked, and I've talked with the, your former CEO, Tom Georges, about this. Why are you going with Amazon? Everyone's saying that's a bad move, contrarian move. You guys said, hey, the customers are asking for it. Now it's all cloud all the time, data as a fabric. This is now mainstream. Really good tailwinds for NetApp right now, because you got the core base. Yep. The shiny new toy is not winning the day, but blocking and tackling good technology and the right customer focus. Talk about the cloud impact, Anthony. Yeah, I mean, just to, just to make a point, just on the last comment, I mean, what Dave does, I think, is you lean into things that are disruptive. Yeah. And I think very few founders have that ability to sort of... Well, sometimes I think the biggest value add I can bring to NetApp is to give people permission to let go yeah. Yeah. of the old stuff. And some of it's hard, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm the guy that wrote Waffle <laughs> yeah. for ONTAP, and so I'm not saying, yeah, I mean, we're still, we're still shipping a lot of that stuff, yeah. and it's awesome, but some people struggle to say, what do you mean we're going to sell another storage system? This is always the best one for everything. Yeah, yeah. That's what we've been saying for so <laughs> yeah. long. And so, yeah. if I can let go, it's like it's my baby, and I still yeah. love it, yeah. but can we have another kid too, you yeah. know? And, it, and, it, uh, it's so always I think that's a valuable yeah. role. I mean, you've been instrumental in the cloud strategy, and yeah. you tell a cloud story first and it's not what you would expect. And I think that's what gives NetApp its sort of unique, and I think uh, it's 25 years is, you go out and you could easily talk about all the things that NetApp has done, but you choose to talk about where you think what NetApp has to go. Yeah. You know, what, what was interesting to me about today's, uh, today's general session, because we, we had so much new stuff, yeah. I think you almost can't get your head around it. We had, we had to divide it into categories, and the categories we chose really align with how we see customers working. Yeah. And so the first category is, a lot of people have, and will continue to have for years, the traditional style of data center with client servers, Linux, Windows, yeah. you, you know, you rack and design it, like what should the fiber channel be, and it's <laughs> virtualized, but like here's the chunk for Oracle, here's the chunk for, Virtual it, desktop. It's running apps, by the it's, way. Yeah, it's running critical all, apps for the all, company. Running all of this stuff, and then you've got this new style, which is all one U racks and wired to the top HCI, and yeah, yeah. and you know this whole next generation data center, um, and then and then all the cloud stuff yeah. that you know it's services running entirely in Amazon. We've got services where we're moving data from one hyperscaler public cloud to a different hyperscaler public cloud with no NetApp hardware involved. I mean, these are entirely so cloud native, cloud resident services. How do solve like one from like one region to another region of AWS? So you're saying that the solution can move from one yeah. cloud provider to another. We've been doing that for a while. I mean, ONTAP itself, you can buy ONTAP cloud for AWS and you can buy it for Azure. And so you can establish a cluster on one and connect it to a cluster on a different one and let ONTAP snap between the two, move workloads between the two, back up between the two. Yeah. We've always had that now. The orchestrator that we show today pushes us much, much higher and provides our customers with a true multi-cloud platform. But a multi-cloud platform that really starts to blend compute and storage together. Yeah. And it's a platform that's built from the ground up on Kubernetes which is now, I think, the sort of universally accepted yeah. container strategy for microservice-based applications, and yes, that platform will allow you to deploy an application package 
at the same time on any of the big three hyperscalers. So a lot of the pushback that I saw on social media was from the announcement yesterday with Microsoft, Azure, NFS. Why are, why is You got that? pushback? Yeah, uh, pushback. Well, like, why? <laughs> well, it, the object storage is the future and it's, it, it's the best way to do cloud, period. Actually, it was the only way. Can yeah. you talk about the importance of NFS and the, and the data fabric? Well, and, can I back and, up a step? Ob just to be clear, object storage is awesome. It is. And NetApp has an object storage solution. Yep. And I'm not going to diss object storage, right? It's right. great. However, NFS is cool too, yep. and a lot of people have a whole bunch of apps on-prem, and they've written them already. They run whatever they run, uh, and, and, it, and if it uses NFS and you'd like to have it in the cloud, you don't want step number one is let's rewrite it. Exactly. You want step number one That's is it already works, and I would just like it to be working over there so I don't have to mess with yeah. physical hardware. Well, I and know this, is, this might be sacrilegious for me to say as being from Silicon Valley, and, and you are too, but the shiny new toy doesn't win the day, and what we learned from the Hadoop, and we've seen it a little bit in OpenStack, which, but they caught it early before it became a tumor was the cost of ownership to write stuff from scratch yeah. is problematic. Yeah, yeah. So there's an issue of legacy is not a bad thing. Liquid containers. Your point about Kubernetes. So you have to run these apps. You don't. No one wants to well, rewrite I'm not code. Even argue yeah. if it's a bad thing or not a bad thing. It exists. Yes. Exactly right. And we want to help take but care of it. Why re rewrite code as a mandate to get yeah. this? So nobody. I mean, if it makes total sense, okay, you look at it. But it's not. No, I think is, IDC. Is, IDC pegs. You know, file-based. You know, workloads at more than 24 exabytes with on-prem growing at somewhere around 18% Kager and cloud growing at 25%. So, you know, objects are not the answer to everything, uh, yeah. old or new actually. As an application developer, I, I like the opportunity to have both and I think applications will consume better. Let me jump into the announcements that are on stage here, the other conversations, there's a lot of stuff, as you mentioned, so the folks should look at the keynote, go to this, we've streamed it live, so you can go to SiliconANGLE or go to netapps.com, check it out, but a couple things jumped out at me. The uh, ONTAP 9 point, was it 9.3? And SolidFire, interesting integration there, shipped, great stuff. The um, Cloud Orchestrator, Seamless moving data across multiple clouds. Yep. Okay, I've, everyone knows yep. me, I've been critical of this. This is, I've been looking for someone to actually show me. Because yep. multi-cloud is hard, yet latency yes. issues, it's a ton of stuff. But you're not rewriting code to do it. Exactly. You can do it on-prem, huge deal. And then the other thing is just a general sentiment of the A-team guys around the channels. The channel partners are energized. Yep. They see an opportunity to build a business sales channel for NetApp, but more importantly, they can come and deliver to customers. Guys, unpack that, those dynamics. Obviously the solid fire thing of flash. Can I start with the channel? Yeah. When I look at how the channel interacts with a lot of customers, they make their money selling stuff, often gear, but if you look at what are they really providing, a lot of them are, are acting as IT consultants, in some cases with smaller companies, as CIOs for hire. And so, you know, it doesn't, people go, oh, well, what do they do if it's cloud? Or what do they do if it's on-premise? Like, the customer yeah. still needs that Presidio same advice has cloud, and consulting. Presidio has cloud concierge. They have their own yeah. cloud service yeah. with their customers. And, and so I, I, I just think it's, <laughs> it, there's a big opportunity Huge. for the people who choose to embrace it. Yeah. Anyone who's telling their customers, whoa, 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 slow down, you don't want to go in the cloud, we'll help you not go in the cloud. Like, I don't think that's a long-term business yeah. model anymore. Yeah. Cloud is um, destination is happening. Well, the no other thing about I would it. say on the partner side that, that we've seen is that we now have, I think, credibility in the cloud, so much so that we are signing partners that only work in the cloud. Mm. So a lot of Amazon partners, a lot of Azure partners have come to us mm. and said, hey, you know, we didn't realize you had all of these data services, and we are we're running customers' infrastructures on the hyperscalers, yeah. and we'd like to use your software to make our lives easier. We'd like to use Ontac Cloud, we'd like to use Clouting. So, as well as our traditional partners, there are other partners here at this event that are first time as at Insight. So talk about the cloud dynamic, because certainly it's a, it's a, it's a lift, rising yep. tide floats all boats, a tailwind, whatever you want to call it. But now I'm a CXO, I'm having a conversation. I'm like, whoa, you got my attention, yep. NetApp. All my old trusted NetApp guys, the storage guys, and they're talking data, which music to my ears, because I got all this stuff going on, yep. GPPR, and all of a sudden cloud. I didn't know, that, I didn't know they had a cloud. No, and you don't common. get a cloud strategy. You either do cloud or you don't. So this has come up on theCUBE a lot. Talk about the dynamic of how you talk about the dynamics. I'm like, okay, I know I got to build for the cloud. How does NetApp fit into my strategy? Because I got to cross the bridge to the future. I got business to take care of today, both on-prem, in the three pillars, but I got to have a cloud vision. Well, let me, vision. 
let me back up a little bit. Um, one of the reasons we think we can help, that we're very well positioned to help, it's very easy to fire up a thousand CPUs in the cloud. You want a thousand CPUs, you fire them up, then you unfire them up, and everything is easy until there's any data. What did they want to look at? How do you get it in there? What did they create? How are you going to keep it safe? Do you want to leave it in that cloud or a different cloud? Or do you want it on-prem or all three? And as soon as you start getting your, yourself into those questions, you go, whoa, that's the hard part of the cloud. The good news is, that's exactly what NetApp does. That's the kind of work that NetApp focuses on. And so, the starting point is, look, the hard, CPUs, computes, lambdas, yeah. Container, all that stuff is easy until you get to the data which lives forever and you're legally required to do something with it. Well, now let's talk about what you're trying to accomplish and, and where you're going. Like that, that now is, and one of my goals these days, how long can we talk without mentioning a product? Because yeah. it's not, you know, eventually yeah. you're going to have to get to, oh by the way, we have a, we have a backup tool yeah. that'll reach into Office 365 and suck it out as objects and put it on your on-prem object well, storage. Backup's a whole other story. Into AWS no, or something like that. There's but, no walls in a cloud. But, uh, so, so eventually you get to some tool or some product, but you want to talk for a long time about where they're going, what they're trying yeah. to solve, what they care about. Often they don't care about a thing you think they should. Like, aren't you really concerned about budget? No, actually we're dying because we can't solve this problem. So yeah. the budget comes after we solve that. Well, okay. We were talking last week about, the I, uh, I was calling it the tool shed paradigm mm -hmm. or paradox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the tool shed paradox is that they're focusing so much on the tools that they have that they have this bloated tool chest. Somebody's getting collecting dust. They bought a hammer that they're trying to mow their lawn with. Yeah, exactly. So like you have a problem of too many tools. Yeah. <laughs> Pun intended. So the question is, is that as it kind of distracts from the focus, to your point, data. Data seems to be the killer app in the cloud because now, not just moving data around the cloud, developers are using data yeah. in real time. So batch in real time are, is huge. Yeah, and How is the data. application developed? Because I'm a CIO, I've got a lot of things going on on my plate. I'm ramping up DevOps, app, and more application development, new developers, open source, blah, blah, blah. Security, well, think, yeah. governance. Well, I, mean, I mean, to me, I sort of think a really nice soundbite uh, that I got was, I was an application developer and my career has always been building applications and it's always been the applications that owned the data. There was an application server and it executed business logic that read or wrote into a repository. A database. I am, I am at the point where I believe we are in an inflection where now the data will own the application. Mm. And I, what I mean by that is the data has to be fluid and available for many applications to consume it. Some of them will enrich yeah. it, some of them will uh, replace pieces of it, and so architectures have to change. And I think NetApp's you know, incredibly fortunate that we have such a strong data yeah. story at a time where that the data itself will be the primary asset on a company's balance sheet. I, I really believe if, you, that. if you believe that, if you believe that point, which I do by the way, I think you're 100% right, that changes the paradigm, flips it upside down but it also creates the conundrum of data governance because I got a policy, I'm going to put the brakes on that because you're freeing the data to be addressable, to be more alchemist Absolutely. kind of model where I can't control it, but I need to control it because I got regulations, I got governance issues. So, so you feel pause. How do you guys address that? I know you got a governance story, but that's a dynamic, that's a psychology. Well, no, I think, you know, I think but, but that, add on yeah. to that, to, to add on to that, well, you talked about How availability do that? and, and I mean, governance. So there's the policy piece of exactly. it, and then there's the availability piece of it. Just because I can move from an application developer's perspective, just because I can move an application to the cloud, doesn't mean that it will perform like it will when I, you know, using uh, no. 100 mm -hmm. microseconds of latency uh, in my private data center. So how do I get the policy yeah. and the technology governance that combine together in the cloud? I mean, I think I'll make two points. I think the obvious answer to the first question is we have the data fabric. And I think NetApp has pioneered you know, its strategy around a set of data services that do certain tasks that can be consumed as applications or as APIs. But then we've gone one level higher and now we, we orchestrate and connect those things up and provide meaningful solutions. And, and Dave has a fantastic, you know, we were talking about a fantastic demo with Storage Grid, I'll let Dave explain that. The second point I would make though is what you've got to understand is that the customer that we talk to isn't AT&T, that's just a 
big building with a logo on it. A customer is the person inside the organization and we all now know that there is a new, there's a new customer and that customer is uh, people refer to as the data scientist. And there haven't been data scientists before. But now every company is hiring data scientists. Why? Because the data itself has become the primary asset. Application developers are now serving the data scientists. So DevOps was developers making op infrastructure as code yep. with operations. You're essentially describing a new paradigm, data ops. Correct. Data as code. Absolutely Because right. you need to have it programmable. Absolutely right. And I think that's what most people call metadata, or they talk now about APIs for everything. And so I think that's the new norm. I think that there will be very large, you know, catalogs of data surrounded by policy and government governance, but expressed essentially as an API and that the data itself can be manipulated in real time or through batch using a set of RESTful APIs. And, and I think, Dave, you, know, you should share you know, the, the demo, the storage grid guys did today. It's just a fantastic so data fabric use case. Some of my favorite use cases with the data fabric is where you're confused, the line is blurred yeah. even, is it cloud or is it on-prem or what is it? Exactly. And we've been working hard to integrate those things. So here's an example. We, we showed, and this is a made up use case, but, but uh, it was an on-prem solid storage grid, so it's a bucket of objects. Did I mention we love objects? <laughs> it's, a, it's a bucket of objects and their faces. And the, and the problem was, how do we identify what's going on with these faces? Are they happy, are they sad, are they, are they angry? And you don't want to write your own face recognizer. And Amazon has good yeah. face recognition Reco. technology, yeah. I, I recognize. And, uh, and so the use case that we constructed is, here's the bucket. We have integrated our storage grid object storage with Amazon's simple notification service. And so anytime a new object gets put into the bucket, it notifies Amazon. Amazon can do whatever it wants with that information. Hey, here's the bucket, here's a new object added. What we had it do was issue a Lambda, connect up the notification to a Lambda, have the Lambda come back out, grab the data from on-prem, look at it with the face recognizer, okay, happy, and then go back on-prem and update that metadata. Yeah. So is that cloud? Or is that on-prem? We no, used this is, this, Amazon's you're hitting, Lambda. You're hitting the new development. This is data fabric. This That's is the new development. Built. This is the new development reinvention. This is what I think a renaissance is coming big time. Because making that happen, it takes creativity. Yeah, exactly. it, the, the barriers to pull that off now are almost down to just knowing what's available. Exactly. And so I think a renaissance is coming because that's amazing, but then you got to say, how do you scale that? And this is the challenge CXOs have. So well, these are, these are you know, what people call microservices yeah, or serverless yeah. computing environments where they're breaking down the basic construct of an application to be a set of consumable services that yeah. can be orchestrated around particular data flows. And, and I think you run into a problem of data, how do you discover those microservices? Correct. So having a trusted provider to go and aggregate Correct. all of those microservices Correct. is a helpful approach. Correct. Guys, I know we're tight on time, you got to go, and super thankful for your time coming on theCUBE and sharing your insight and color commentary <laughs> uh, on what's going on. Final Thank question you. for both Thank of you guys before you, you split is this. I've been watching NetApp for years, big fan of the company, obviously Silicon Valley darling. Sometimes it takes a lot of heat. NetApp's dead and they never die, but you guys are always winning. Reinvention has been a big part of your culture. But that's not about pivoting. It's about building and just adjusting. Secret, secret to the success, how do you guys do um, it? Advice we, for others? We have repeatedly leaned in to the thing that was going to kill us. So when VMware came along, everyone was like, oh, software-defined data center, it was, nobody's going to need data storage services anymore, data management, VMware will do it all. And we said, you know what, that's not right. It's hard to do the data part, and we're going to go make VMware better. And if we do that, our customers will pay us money to help them move to VMware faster. We leaned in yeah. on the thing that was going to kill us. And we're doing exactly the same thing. I mean, everyone was going, oh, cloud's You built kill around Nata. it rather than let it roll over you. Not just built around it, we really? said, we'll Into make it. it better. And we did the yeah. same thing again with the yeah. cloud. Oh, the cloud's going to kill you. And we're like, you know what, let's go figure out how to make Amazon better, make Microsoft better. If we can yeah. make them better, then, I mean, if you solve a hard problem for a customer, they, somewhere or another, you can figure out how to get paid for that. And, and I think yeah. that's what we've been doing. And you get in early, too, the timing is critical. It's not like, you're late to the game and saying, there's a pony in there somewhere. You look at it, although a little bit maybe applied We first announced this, that we were working on this cloud stuff um, three years ago. 
2014, yeah. we had been started working in 2013. We were there from the ground with Amazon and with Azure, running our ONTAP code, and, and they were changing their environment to fit with us, and we were changing our yeah. code to fit with them. And, and yeah. years later, when Microsoft says, who are we going to go to to help us manage the enterprise, they came to NetApp. Right. Right? Like, because we've been working with them for so Guys, long. Guys, I wish you had more time. It. We're going to get you in our studio in Palo Alto. Great conversation, real fire energy going on here from the execs here at uh, NetApp. This is theCUBE, more live coverage in Las Vegas at NetApp Insight 2017 after this short break. Calling all barrier.